time. Um, we've got so many really fantastic examples in it and we're really grateful um, to Karen and Marion who both provided really great ideas from their own parishes which I think is will be one of the most uh, useful things when using the resource. So we've just got at the beginning a bit of a um, uh, stating the need for action, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, but it's always good to remind ourselves, and especially at SCIAF, we're particularly aware of the effects that climate change is having around the world. And then we've got a really fantastic example case study from the River Guardians in Colombia, who have themselves um, organised some really fantastic activities in their communities to care for our common home and um, we've got some of these here so it's things like um, having a social media page, organising um, local cleanup events involving young people, really really brilliant things that, that the River Guardians have done and in really difficult circumstances so I think that there'll be a lot of things that we can, we can learn in Scotland um, from what they've done. And then we've got the, the ways to get started in your parish. So hopefully you already know about Eco Congregation Scotland, which Stephen will talk more about um, and about SCIAF, but there's loads of support available. So there's yeah, lots of people who, who can help you when you're starting out, but we've got some, some ideas here about finding the team and of course, building prayer and reflection um, into, into your activities. And we've got some more practical tips as well to do with um, perhaps starting a wildlife garden or organising a care for creation meal. So obviously it sounds like a lot of different things, but the wonderful thing is that there's such a variety of activities that we can do to care for our common home. So it really can suit you and your parish and your community, whatever feels right for you. And then later on, we've got um, energy and travel. So more practical ideas on ways to to maybe avoid flying um, and have uh, more green energy sources in your home and food as well which is obviously a huge a huge thing to remember and then we just finish off with the um, reduce reuse recycle ideas so i know that um, karen and marion will share more of the examples of things that they've done in their parishes later but there's really brilliant ideas like organizing a swap party and um, making sure that we can buy second hand and share things across across the community so that's all from me I hope you find the resource really useful. Um, it will be live on the SCIAF website soon, but it should also be um, sent to everybody who attends today. Um, but of course, do get in touch with SCIAF and Eco Congregation Scotland because many parishes have done really wonderful things already. So it's just good to, to learn together. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, and I will send everybody an email with a link to that resource um, tomorrow morning. Um, so you can have a wee look at it. Um, but next up, I'm going to ask Stephen Curran um, from Eco Congregation of Scotland if he could tell us a bit about the, the work that they are doing. Over to you, thank Stephen. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, and thank you very much to Lucy for that absolutely fantastic um, introduction to the new resource um, that's been revised on an excellent resource that SCIAF already had for parishes across Scotland. But we're really excited about the opportunity of using that over uh, the coming weeks. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Stephen Curran, Manager of Eco Congregation Scotland. Uh, Jonathan's already told you that I'm a parish at St Helens in Langside. Um, we're an ecumenical movement across Scotland and we have been active working with Catholic churches uh, since we started when church leaders signed up 19 years ago to get the Eco Congregation movement started. But we're really looking forward to encouraging far more involvement across parishes in Scotland, particularly over the coming year, and it's a special year for us. Um, obviously, our movement's grounded in scripture, tradition, the teachings of the church across all denominations about the importance of caring for God's creation. And we know that the pollution, the rise in sea levels, the rise in temperatures are a massive issue around the world, but they're also an issue at home. And this is a map of uh, Mingus Hill and Dundee's in the centre, where St Ninian's our most recent registered eco congregation. Uh, from the, the, the Catholic community of the Diocese of Dunkeldas, and they're lucky they're up a hill, <laughs> hence the name Mingus Hill. But if you're a little bit down the hill, you can see the flood risk from the River Tay and assorted problems that they can get from the Scottish Environment Protection Agency flood map. So the climate emergency can hit closer to home, 
but we know there's a huge impact around the world. And we know from the work of SCIAF, the excellent work leading on addressing climate justice issues, um, the picture on the left here is of a subsistence farmer in Africa who's unable to feed his family and be involved in feeding his village because of extremes of temperature, extremes of weather, terrible drought, and that huge problem we have with the weather being adversely affected on the people who are least able to afford it and the climate crisis affecting people in the global south far more adversely than people that can't afford to um, address that issue in their own communities in the same way that perhaps some of us can. And on the right there's a picture of a newborn baby and this obviously touches on Pope Francis in the Laudato Si encyclical when he asks us what kind of planet do we want to leave for the generations to follow. So intergenerational justice is a big motivator as well for us and that question about who is my neighbour, well we all share our common home which is obviously the whole focus for tonight's discussion. We're an independent ecumenical charity working all over Scotland with churches of all denominations. Um, the important thing for us is our values are about caring passionately for God's creation. We want to see a Scotland that cares for God's creation. It's a faith-based movement about local groups of Christians working together, working cooperatively with each other, and other people who care about the environment in your own community, other organisations. And it's really about transformational change, making a real dramatic change as individuals in our communities and our parishes nationally and obviously with an impact around the world. Um, Basically, we've got now 505 churches across Scotland registered, which is about 14% of churches in Scotland. And they organise um, on an ecumenical basis around 22 local networks. So there's probably about two or three in each diocese for the Catholic Church in Scotland to be part of in terms of local parishes. But we're the largest movement of local environment groups because of that 505 number. That's people locally driven by their faith to be active in environmental issues. And we now have 32 Catholic parishes registered in that movement. We could do with a lot more, so we're really keen to encourage um, more parishes to get engaged to support the activities. We're going to hear about a lot of fantastic work through that new resource and also from the great examples you're going to hear about later tonight. We focus on three issues in terms of the way we support the work through the parishes. It's about spiritual living, practical living and global living. And spiritual living is really about discovering what it means to care for God's creation in prayer, worship and conversation. For example, St. Anne and Tridianus hosted a retreat in Laudato Si with other Edinburgh parishes earlier this year, um, involving our own chaplain, who we have from the United Reformed Church. And that was a day online at the height of the lockdown restrictions, really, in terms of Catholic parishes and discussing what Laudato Si means. What does it mean in a practical way as people of faith in their own parishes in terms of worship and prayer, Mass on a Sunday, Mass any other day of the week as well, but also thinking a bit more carefully about what does it mean to our own faith from a spiritual perspective, is it the heart of worship and prayer in our own parishes. We also look at practical living, which is about putting that care into action individually, locally, national and globally. We want to live justly in a transformed world. And part of that is around individuals taking action. A lot of that can be focused on the church building. It could be about energy saving. It could be about how do you make your church open to people in the community in terms of environmental issues, maybe encouraging recycling, recycling clothes, recycling bottles or whatever. But it can also be if you've got church grounds, an important aspect to that, respecting biodiversity, encouraging wildlife, looking at your gardens and your grounds. A great example in Edinburgh um, is in Lauriston where Sacred Heart and the Lauriston Jesuit Centre have been engaging, not in their own church grounds, which are very limited, but in the meadows next door, in terms of a growing space that they're able to access in that particular community. So it's not just about the church building, but that's important. Saving energy is a big issue in terms of the bills that the parishes face, heating in the winter and so on. But we can certainly look at other issues you can do practically. And you hear a little bit from, for example, St. Margaret's and Lock Gilped holding a climate conversation that they opened up to people in their town to talk about the changes we all need to make to address the climate emergency. And the third aspect around global living, that's looking at committing to campaigning on urgent threats to the web of life in our vulnerable world. And that's about local and national concerns. It could be about people wanting to encourage walking and cycling in their own area, which is a big issue now in terms of social distancing and access to cycling and people having restricted access and payments and so on, but also nationally in terms of you know access to public transport, what kind of support can we get to reduce our carbon footprint, the impact we make nationally 
across Scotland, across the UK, in terms of the, the rise in carbon emissions that impact on that rise in temperature around the world. And we see SCIAF and Justice and Peace Scotland as key partners in the Catholic community in Scotland, working with our wider ecumenical network, but we really support whatever they are driving for through the likes of Stop Climate Chaos Coalition and other campaigns that they would do throughout the year. And it's fantastic to see them focus on environmental issues as a key top priority at this moment in time as well. Um, how can you get involved? It's really simple to register as an equal congregation. Um, you can do that and it, it doesn't cost a penny to register. Um, think, discuss, act and pray as a parish community, as a justice and peace group, a ski aft group, as a parish council, whatever it makes sense in terms of your own community. And we can facilitate that online if you're not yet at the, the stage of doing it in a physical yeah. setting, which you obviously aren't. And looking at working towards an eco award where we recognise some of the fantastic work that's done and supporting each other through that local network. This the big secret of what we do is it's the oh, biggest and most successful and oh, easiest way to engage on ecumenical issues with other churches compared to anything else in Scotland at present. So it's a really easy way of working with other churches, not just Catholic parishes, but churches from a whole range of backgrounds in your own community. And all we're asking you to do when you register is you're affirming that environmental issues and caring for God's creation form part of your church's life and mission. We're not saying what you need to do. We're not prescribing a full list of things. We do have support to help you in that, but basically it's about a commitment to saying it's important. And it's really simple. You can register online at ecocongregationscotland.org slash get dash involved, or you can send a registration form from there. Um, the next steps involved from that are having a small group to lead in planning. You'll see in the resource that Lucy described earlier, it talks about the best group in terms of your own setting, your own parish, whether it's Justice and Peace, SCIAF group, that's a really good way to look on it. Using the church checkup to review your congregation, we've got a, a very short document which looks at a whole range of issues that would affect you in your parish. Are you doing things? Are you not doing things? Are there aspects you could consider? To see where you're at on your eco journey to address the issues in relation to the environment and the wider climate emergency. And importantly, agreeing a plan of action that you can look at and you can measure your progress on those spiritual, practical and global living examples. We've also got to mention the reward scheme, but a third of our churches have gone through this where we recognise growing levels of encouragement, activism and fantastic ideas we can share across others. And we've now assessing these online, whereas in the past we'd have had to physically visit churches and spoken with groups, but we're, we're using the new technology in a really successful way to engage across our movement, as well as with a lot of online events to encourage practical activities we can all do and having events where we can pray together on specific issues as well. This is a really important time. Obviously, SCIAF have been organising a fantastic series of events in relation to the season of creation, which is a global period between now and St Francis' uh, feast day next month. We've got an ecumenical resource which has been written, including Catholic contributors, but a whole range of other contributors from different church backgrounds, which has been coordinated by our equal chaplain, who we have from the United Reformed Church on a full-time basis, Reverend David Coleman. On the left here at, some of you, we may can recognise the parish as a Our Lady of Loretto and St Michael's in Musselburgh, who we're hearing from a little bit later on this evening. So David has been visiting online a lot of churches in recent months, and hopefully in future he'll be able to visit and encourage groups in different settings, supporting you as appropriate in terms of your own setting and your own groups. Um, and the final point I'll make is we have a really good opportunity in the coming year with the UK hosting the, hosting the COP26 in Glasgow, the big UN climate change summit. And we are looking to encourage churches to look at that transformational change I mentioned earlier in your own local setting, pushing our government at Scottish and UK level to do more and to be global leaders, to set an example that we can push governments all around the world to agree on. But most importantly, being able to commit um, as a, a people of prayer who are able to be welcoming to those who may be coming to Glasgow for that summit or around the world listening to their story, which is something SCIAF are, are very good at encouraging us to do. So thank you very much for your time. Final point to say there is our Eco Congregation Scotland.org webpage. If you want to pop on there, if you want some more information, please get in touch with us. If your parish is already involved, we're happy to keep supporting you. And if you're not involved, what's keeping you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen. A lot of food for thought there for us. Um, and it's great as well to hear that St Ninian's and Dundee is one of the, the latest parishes to join. Hopefully we'll get a few more of them signing up after tonight's call. Um, but if you have any questions for Stephen, um, please start popping them into the chat box now 
once we've um, once we've been through the, the our free speakers, we'll come, come, we'll come back to the chat box for any questions that you want to ask. Um, but next up, we're going to speak. To, we're going to hear from Marion Pallister um, about what she's been doing with the group at St Margaret's in Loch Gilpin. So over to you, Marion. Have I actually done that properly? Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Oh, good. <laughs> um, thank you very much for the opportunity to tell you a little bit about our eco congregation journey at St Margaret's in Loch Gilphead in the Diocese of Argyll and the Isles. Um, welcome to St Margaret's. This is uh, our little church built in the 1920s, so uh, there were problems with heating, but not anymore, we've, we've conquered that. Um, we're a small parish, uh, probably around 60 or 70 people would attend Mass if we weren't socially distancing. Some of those parishioners live in Loch Gilphead itself, and neighbouring Ardrishig, but many live in rural areas uh, in Knapdale and Kintyre and in the countryside heading north towards Oban on the coast road. Um, so anything up to sort of 20 odd miles distant. So as you can imagine, uh, in an area such as this, climate matters. The fact that the weather has become unpredictable, floods in August, um, gales at all times of, of the year, which we never used to have, seasonal shifts. Uh, these all make it difficult for our farmers, fishermen, and those in the tourism industry as well. Not to mention those who work in forestry, which is our main crop here. And those who have to travel to the central belt and they face uh, landslips and flooding uh, which keeps us away from lovely Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, plastic pollution affects wildlife and isn't particularly pretty for the visitors. And like all parishes, ours uh, and our Justice and Peace group aim to care for people of all faiths and none in as many ways as we can, both in the community in Scotland and around the world. And we understand that what we can do in Loch Gilphead and roundabout can affect very vulnerable people uh, in the global south. Oops, I'm, that's not working for me. Um, so, like many parishes, we were doing a lot of the basics. We used fair trade products, um, the recycling of warm quality clothes to the homeless was part of the agenda, but our Justice and Peace group felt that it could be more structured. So, we invited Stephen, Stephen Curran from Eco Congregation to talk to us and to the wider community. And it has to be said that some of us had already attended eco-congregation meetings. Um, and in this part of the world, they were run by and mainly attended by um, Church of Scotland and other churches. And delegates all knew and loved Skiaf's first Laudato Si Caring for Our Common Home booklet. Well, Catholics, had to ask what it actually was. So, <clears throat> um, we, we live and we learn. We hope that they're going to look at, um, at the new one. So we all did um, Stephen's homework and I would recommend any parish that hasn't taken the plunge to become an eco-congregation, um, to invite Stephen or his colleagues to come and talk. Uh, it certainly pushed us to try more, to do more, and of course, um, to get our certificate as an eco-congregation. 
As an eco-congregation, we've tried to broaden our scope and reach out to people, uh, particularly on issues of climate change. We support a local charity with its roots in St Margaret's that provides education for vulnerable children in Zambia. Um, you might see some pots and pans and so on behind me from Zambia. It's, it's um, somewhere that's very dear to me and um, we therefore know a lot about what happens to people in the global south and um, the parish obviously supports SCIAF's work and knows through them what happens in other areas of the world. So we knew what to do as individuals um, and we knew that as a nation we were affecting people around the world uh, and we knew that that's why SCIAF and Justice and Peace Scotland and Pax Christie Scotland have all put the environment uh, and the climate emergency at the top of their agenda. So at grassroots level, um, does recycling help? We asked Peter Leckie, a gentleman from Argyle and Butte Council, to talk about what happens to our recycling. And we got to know that things happen very differently in different parts of the, of the country. Um, so um, it was inspirational listening to what happens to our rubbish and we were involved um, and motivated to produce a leaflet to encourage the rest of the community. So having talked about rubbish, um, Faith led, this is really is about caring for our common home. So um, we wanted to make something that would advise people locally um, and we thought that perhaps um, what we had from Peter Leckie would be helpful but we also found that the, um, the, the, the website for the council was absolutely essential to the, the, the things that we did there. So um, that's the, the inside of the leaflet and uh, parishioner um, and St Margaret's Justice and Peace member Karen Welch and I got it all together um, and we distributed it to other churches. We went to the library, the community centre, anywhere that would take a copy of this. Um, we tried to, um, to spread it around. And um, just before lockdown, we had another print of this and they're good to go. So um, it's something that, um, you know, the effect that our actions have on the Global South is dramatic. Um, climate change affects all sorts of things, but uh, we can help by starting uh, at, at home. Um, and uh, I think that if what we buy, what we waste, what we recycle, even in a wee parish like ours, uh, can mean that um, another refugee um, might have to seek um, somewhere to, to look for it here on our shores or need the in, in, intervention of a ski off project. If we do the right thing, that doesn't happen or we can allay that. So um, we felt that this was a really important thing to do. We're now creating that we hope will help the local environment uh, and in turn the global environment. And it's all about caring for our common home. And Cecilia Rees is a par parishioner with expertise and imagination. And I'm sure you've all got at least one Cecilia in your parish. Um, and the, uh, the tires here, we, we want to have raised beds to grow fruit and veg to, to share with community and to encourage children to enjoy playing their part 
in caring for our common home, as well as having flowers and shrubs that attract the wildlife. And of course, COVID uh, stopped clay. So that's why we've got uh, a number of tractor tyres making us look a little bit like a scrappy's yard at the moment. Um, but they will become raised beds, uh, honest. Um, and we've even been told how we cut them and stop the slugs getting in. We've, we've got it all sussed in that, in that sense. Um, so we've continued to con care for our common home in different ways while we're waiting to get on with this. Um, there was a Japanese tree to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which we planted last month. And trees, as you know, are good for reducing carbon emissions. And please ask us back when we've managed to put Cecilia's plan into action. Um, I'll just show that's, that's where we're going. Um, we should have all of that worked out uh, over the winter time. So with our tires uh, in, firmly in place, and Budlia and all of those kind of things. So if you aren't an eco congregation, please apply and join with us in reducing your carbon footprint uh, of Scotland. And as we care for our common home, um, we can reduce that um, in, in a really big way. When Pope Francis marked the fifth anniversary of his Laudato Si document by making this Laudato Si year, uh, it was encouragement not just to pray that world leaders will make good decisions at the COP26 meeting next year, but to act to combat the climate emergency ourselves. In Loch Gilphead, we're trying. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Marianne. That was fantastic. And it's really inspiring to hear um, about the, all the action you're taking at St Margaret's to build links um, with the local community and not just reach out to the local community but also setting that within the context of our responsibilities as global citizens um, and you mentioned as well about obviously this is the the fifth anniversary of the Dato Sea and next year will be the year when um, COP26 comes to Glasgow when we'll, we'll welcome all um, all the world's leaders for the the climate summit so it really is a crucial year when we as Catholics in Scotland can can make a difference um, so just a reminder to everyone as well, just to, to pop any questions you have for Marion or Stephen um, into the chat box and we'll come to them later on. Um, but next up we have our final speaker um, and uh, I'm delighted to introduce Karen from, um, Karen Porteous from Our Lady and Loretto in Musselburgh. So over to you, Karen. Hi everyone. Um, as Jonathan said, my name is Karen Porteous and I'm representing the parish of Our Lady of Loretto and also brought East Lothian. Um, we became an eco-congregation parish a couple of years ago and were awarded a bronze plaque. Um, this plaque signifies to the community that we aim to have best practice within our church, which limits the negative impact we have on the environment and encourages the nurture of our natural surroundings. We also acknowledge that this is a journey to continually improve on what we do, support each other in our efforts collectively and individually, uh, empowering our parish community with information that helps them to make better choices. Um, being non-judgmental as well, um, but strongly promoting this practice. So how did we do this? Well, it simply started with the people. So I think you'll be able to see some of the people on the next slide. Um, that's all you need, some enthusiasm and a willingness to build relationships. You don't even need to be like Greta Thunberg. Even if you don't have lots in common, we all have a shared thing, and that's that we all live together on this earth and we want to save it. We share a home. So we're very lucky um, in our parish to have a brilliant and diverse group of people, um, some, just some of whom I've re represented on this slide here. Uh, we all came together to create our Justice, Peace and Environment group. Um, all the people on this slide mean a lot to me. They're, they're sharing this journey with me and I've learned a lot from every single one of them. I think they've all learned from each other on this, on this journey. So in our group, we, were in, we are inspired by Pope Francis's uh, wonderful encyclical Laudato Si, believe it or not, being Catholic Church. 
Um, and our first step in living these philosophies was to contact Equal Congregation to invite a speaker to the parish and advertise the, the speaker. Um, in this case, it was David Boutain. Um, so he was wonderfully informative. Um, I would advise um, parishes just to simply contact Equal Congregation, as Stephen Curran has said, for more information on holding a talk in your parish or a Zoom presentation. So the hard hitting facts about the world warming up and in particular being presented with a visual map of how the Earth's temperature had risen since the start of the Industrial Revolution made a massive impact on us all. And I know that we all made a mental commitment at this point to begin the journey of becoming an equal congregation. Um, along with this was an acknowledgement that certain countries are responsible for this temperature rise, with the impact of this having dire consequences in countries with less resources resulting in vast inequalities. So we found it really helpful just to collectively read through the application form first for the award to see what we were already doing to help climate disruption and what else we could do. At every step of this as well, we kept the parish informed of the process and we created opportunities for discussion and questions in the community about what we were signing up to. So that was in the form of some coffee mornings, afternoons where people could ask questions after mass anytime. So it's not just about the recycling. We looked at various ways that we could develop practically and embedding a kind of charter to basically raise expectations of what we should be doing. So a great example of this was the donation of unwanted cups from Easter egg boxes and the backs of cupboards. Very simple idea, but this was when our hall committee thought they would have to raise funds for new crockery. Instead, the no-brainer was just to reuse items. Unfortunately, the world is not going to wait for us to change our ways, so there has to be an understanding between all individuals and groups who are using areas such as a church hall. Um, in order to respect this great communal space we have, we must not benefit from the suffering of others. So that was our understanding. Um, this is why we use the use of fair trade as imperative at all teas and coffees that are being held in the church hall. Um, a, fair trade, a fair trade stall should be offered um, at least once a month. Um, the use of storytelling about product manufacture helps us understand why we're doing the things we do and makes us really relatable to us as everyday people. Some of the group joined in the climate chaos protests as well, represent, representing our area of the city and Scotland. And these kind of collective gatherings, which now seem a thing of the past, um, they help us to feel the power of messages rippling through society and keep us energised within the parish. It's important if you can keep channels of information about these, um, these things, these projects open in your parish. Um, people want to know how they can support these projects. Not everybody's well informed. So perhaps by having a person to admin a WhatsApp group, a Facebook page or a Twitter page and filter information through this or newsletters within the church, the people can be involved in these events. One of our biggest projects in the sense that lots of different groups of society were involved was our wildflower garden. So our parish priest kindly donated, donated us a little bit of land that was ironically originally a coal bunker um, and it was littered with um, just orange gravel litter. We raked back the gravel stones, we then recycled them in another area of the church grounds. And we get, began by placing broken recycled slabs to walk around them, scattering seeds, planting, visiting the area. Um, some of our group members collaborated with the school teachers at the local school to get the children involved in planting some wildflower seeds. And beforehand, the children researched some of the wildflowers, um, ones that would encourage wildlife and nature. Um, this worked on many levels. Um, as I've pointed out on this slide, it helped connect other forms of learning, adopt an early appreciation of nature by observing biodiversity firsthand, how all living things depend on each other for survival. We created some evidence of these activities in the form of an A3 floor book. Now, this is a really good idea. If you are applying, um, if you do have assessors that do visit your parish or do it online, it's a great way to show evidence of the things that you were doing and also for the people who are involved to reflect upon um, the recording of the results, you know, seasonal changes in the, in the wildlife garden, um, the impacts, so the children can really see things taking place. Um, the children also had many conversations about the environment, climate chaos, nature, conservation and gardening in general whilst taking part. The whole process is really significant as well. Every stage of it was significant. Um, this could also be a spiritual metaphor for life. 
The wild and natural part of nature should be respected. Weeds can actually help other things to grow and help the purity of the soil. It all works together and one process cannot take place without the other process beforehand. Growth cannot skip stages. And um, in the document Laudato Si, Pope Francis talks about the process he calls rapidification. The speed in which we've grown quickly without really taking stock of what the implications are. Um, this is all becoming apparent now with uh, recent times. Men Shed, a group that provides a safe space for men of all ages and promotes good mental health, uh, are involved in the development of a project to build bird and bat boxes, a bike rack for parishioners to cycle, uh, cycle to church. Um, men Shed meet on the church premises and they have a workshop there, so it's a great connection for us all and everyone benefits from the involvement. So I'd also say, um, just let everyone know what you're doing in the parish. Make it a shared project amongst the community. People love to help. You don't know what spare items people have to donate or skills to bring to the table. Um, and the next slide is an example of a comment made by one of the children from the school who had initially taken part in planting in the garden. And it's a lovely representation of the impact that this had, um, this activity had on them. So. At the end of lockdown, we began painting the garden and another member is developing a separate area for a Mary garden as well. Um, during creation time, we've left a box for members of the community to leave a spiritual stone and they can design and paint this stone and it will be left there to be varnished. And um, it's a great way to still have a connection during COVID and an opportunity to be creative during creation time. So it's hoped that in the future, people can enjoy this space a bit more by coming to observe uh, taking time to reflect, pray, the children can investigate, record sightings and scatter seeds, a shared space for all. Um, one of the GMP and EU Justice, Peace and Environment Group's other projects was to host a swap night within the community. It was a really basic idea of bringing an unwanted item to swap. As the old saying goes, one person's trash is another person's treasure. Um, find someone in the community who's particularly good at upcycling to demonstrate ideas. There are many people on social media who have these skills and would love to, uh, would be delighted to share these whilst um, advertising an ethical business. It's really important to include a baby clothes table, a school uniform table, and of course a fair trade table, as these are really useful in the community and it's a safe space for people to obtain things that they particularly need without any financial burden on them. So we were lucky to gain contact from the council waste sector as well who gave a talk on waste in general in our area and how we can minimise landfill. He also gave some interesting information about how much um, impact on the environment making one pair of jeans has. Um, so if you simply contact your local council you should be able to get in touch with someone who's willing to do this. Um, it's in the local authority's interest to, to support these events in the community. Um, Post-COVID, perhaps um, an event could be held like this online. Social distancing measures could be adopted when delivering items. Maybe the items could be left for 72 hours in a safe space. Um, and it's also important to say that at the end of this event, all of the surplus items were don donated to various charities as well. Um, so that's me. I hope you found this little presentation um, not too long, not too boring, helpful and of some use. Uh, please don't feel overwhelmed with the idea of becoming an equal congregation and all some of the, some of the brilliant ideas that people do. Um, just start small. Um, equal congregation are there to help you as well as all the other groups who have already been through the process of applying for an award. It's amazing how a small seed of an idea can really blossom within a community. Um, God is on your side. So good luck, God bless, and thank you for listening. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Louise McLeod from SCIAF. I'll properly introduce myself in a moment, but first of all, I just want to say a very Big thank you to all of our speakers, to Lucy, to Stephen, to Marion and to Karen for their fascinating and practical presentations. Get so many ideas from them. Um, could I ask everyone to give a round of applause and then we will use that to take a photo um, of everyone for... <laughs> Uh, 
Excellent, Lucy has just put a thumbs up. So I think we've got the photo that we'll potentially be able to share of everyone. Um, even though you couldn't necessarily hear everyone <laughs> giving their round of applause. Thank you very much. So um, before we move on to your questions, um, just quickly introduce myself. Some of you might know me already. Um, I'm the Community Engagement Officer at SCIAF. Um, I look after Glasgow Archdiocese and Argyll and the Islands Diocese. There are three different Community Engagement Officers at SCIAF and we each have different regions to look after. In Scotland, um, we're here to support schools and parishes with activities from fundraising to becoming eco-parishes, um, running workshops on Laudato Sea, um, or workshops on our overseas projects and SCIAF's mission. Um, so if you're looking to get help with becoming an eco-parish or to get in touch with others in your diocese who might be doing something similar, then please do get in touch. Um, you could even leave your name in the chat or um, reply to the email that you'll receive tomorrow following this event. And we also look after SCIAF parish contacts and ambassadors who promote SCIAF's work and mission in their, own in their own parish and around the country. And we're always looking for more parish contacts. Ideally, we'd love to have one in each parish. Um, we have around about 100 just now and the numbers are growing so please do let me know if you're interested in finding out more about how to become a parish contact as well. Um, so now I'd like to invite um, questions from all of you, our guests. I know there's some in the chat box already and I saw that some people had their hands up so um, I will just go to the chat as I saw there was some questions there to get it started. So firstly, um, it's a question for Stephen from Roslyn. Um, Roslyn was saying there used to be a justice and peace ecumenical group in Livingston some years ago. And she'd like to get help to start this up again um, with a concentration on caring for a common home. Can she find out whether other churches in our area are, are registered and also does it need to be the, the clergy who registers? So can I pass over to Stephen, please? Thanks, Louise. It's a great question from Rosalind. Um, I suppose I'll answer the last bit first. It doesn't need to be the clergy that signs up, but it's, it should be a decision that the church makes in some group, which from a Catholic perspective is normally the parish council or the justice and peace or justice and peace and environment group. Um, or it could be a ski aft group if there's one there as well, whatever makes sense, but it's got to be a decision that's made not just by one person. Um, and you would hope that the parish priest is supported <laughs> if the parish priest is signed up by a decision of other people and vice versa obviously as well. Um, so it's important that, that, that that discussion takes place but we're not fussy about what the group is um, as long as it makes sense in terms of your own church and um, particularly in terms of for example in the Livingston area we've got a local network covers West Lothian and Falkirk churches which meets on a sort of semi-regular basis during the course of the year. So individual churches do their own thing, but they also meet collectively. And obviously in the past six, seven months, they've met online to discuss some of the things that have been happening locally. So they could have some of the discussion that you've seen from the other examples from tonight, similar sort of meetings, similar sort of activities, but done on a kind of network basis, encouraging people to share good practice and, and ideas. So that's already on the go in that area. But we've also got a map of all our registered churches on our webpage. I'll put the link in the chat box and you can see the churches that are in and around Livingston, West Lothian area. Um, some Catholic parishes, a range of other denominations as well. We've got some award winners there. Livingston United Parish Church is a particularly good church who have been escalating their activity and environmental issues in the past few years. So they've gone through, I think, two award processes now. Um, so they're really active and other ones are active in different ways and different aspects from that. Um, so anybody can look at that map, I'll pop it online uh, through the chat box and obviously you can sign up for our newsletter, anybody can sign up to be involved in our activities and events, they're all open to anybody to be involved online. Um, you don't need to be registered even to get involved with our events, um, but we encourage people to get involved and organise locally by being registered as well. Thank you very much Stephen, hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, yeah, thank you. Great. There were lots of people who put their hands up 
quickly. So could I just ask you to raise your hands again? Anyone who would like to ask a question? Um, yep, and I'll just go around. Okay, excellent. I will take honour, please. I will just try and unmute you if you're still on mute or maybe you can. Yeah, great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to ask Stephen um, if there were any plans for interfaith engagement with echo congregations or what relationship um, echo congregations has with different faith, uh, different faith groups? Want to that one just now, Louise? Um, that's a really good question. Thanks, Sonia. It's great to see you. I know you've been enthusiastically involved in encouraging environmental activities and a whole range of things you've been involved in in recent years. Um, currently, the COP coming to Glasgow is a massive opportunity that we've really taken as a, a, a big step forward. Part of our charity's objectives is to work with other faiths and other people who are interested in environmental issues, but it does specify working with other faiths. And what we've found is that for the COP coming, Interfaith Scotland as a network, Interfaith Glasgow, the Edinburgh Interfaith Association, different faith groups are coming together to look at the potential for the hospitality and welcome of people coming to Glasgow or looking at Glasgow around the world for that big um, gathering to make a decision to to deal with the climate emergency, but also how can we encourage local faith communities from whatever background to make those transformational change commitments in their own area. So there's a big opportunity for us. Today I was even involved with a meeting uh, of other groups from across the UK, including CAFOD, who are obviously Skiaf's sister down south. Um, and we're there as a kind of Scottish participant looking at how can we do more work with other faiths? How do we get different faiths community to see the opportunities for the coming year? And obviously um, with the COP coming to Glasgow and this work that SKIAF does with young people in schools, I know that in Glasgow schools about a fifth of the young people are from um, a black and minority ethnic background and roughly the same percentage speak English as an extra language. And sometimes that's where you can get a lot of the diverse faith communities as well. So SKIAF's got a fantastic opportunity to engage through particularly Catholic schools in Glasgow um, and across Scotland in those diverse communities with young people in a way that maybe a lot of other charities don't have the same openings. So we're doing quite a bit now, but we could do a lot more. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. And meet myself again. Um, could I see anyone else's hands up? I might need to scan over the two screens, so I might have. Please keep your hand up. <laughs> Marilyn. Um, is that a question from Maureen, Brough? Sorry, I'm trying to find you on the screen now. <laughs> Did we have a question from Maureen? Oh, or from Maryland? I can see one from um, Andrea, who I think Andrea. Has got her hand up. Yeah, Great. I'm just happy to do Andrea. Perfect. Hand over to you. Thank you, Andrea. I've just unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. I mean, I, I, I just have a very practical question. Um, I would quite like to to get people interested, and um. um 
our parish is, is in a funny position, and I'm sure most of you are in the same, the same way, that people are not going to church at the moment. There are some people going to church, but not very many. They're not going to mass um, as regularly as they used to. And when, when they are, they're, they're keeping moving. So they're not looking at notice boards or anything like that. We're certainly not using the church hall. And so I wondered if anybody had got any ideas for actually capturing people's interest to at least get started just now, when actually the parishes have got a lot on their plates with just sheer keeping going and, 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 um, and, and dealing with the, the practical ramifications of, of, of COVID-19. If anybody's got any ideas, it would be great to hear them. Marion, would you like to um, give some ideas there? Thanks, Louise. Um, just to say that our Justice and Peace group has continued throughout the lockdown through Zoom. And um, we found that quite useful in that we could actually do stuff. I, I think I'm an earlier stage even than that, Marion. We, we are literally not communicating with one another at the moment. We try to set a um, and the priest is so busy and grumpy sounding. Sorry about that. Do you do you have a Facebook page for your parish? Yes, we do. But um, again, you know, in the communications group, a number of us suggested that that more people have access to the Facebook page to use it. But that's not really happening either. But I actually think that is a good way in because I think a lot of people do follow Facebook and in our parish Twitter as well. Yeah, even if you're just letting people know that, for example, there's going to be a Zoom meeting and to get in touch with one of you so that you can put round the, the links and so on, that would at least start the ball rolling, perhaps? It might, it might do. It might be worth trying. Thank you. I think Karen also had some suggestions that you wanted to give. I was just going to suggest we've we've been in some discussions about having outdoor an outdoor mass, possibly with smaller numbers, but because a lot of people have been going on walks and, and enjoying a lot of the outdoors and finding a lot of areas of for spiritual retreat themselves. That maybe something like that could be planned in your area where a, a group of you go for a little walk and stop every now and again and discuss areas of spiritual, you know, um, places that you have found of particular comfort during lockdown. Um, you could possibly arrange something like that through social media channels or just a little outdoor mass, a little gathering where you all meet together outside. Would that be of any help to some of your parishioners possibly? Can I add in something to that? Sure, is that Miriam? Okay. Yes, that's right. So I'm a member of Karen's Parish. Um, so we've worked together for a few years now, looking at different ways to kind of draw people in from the wider parish. Um, and every year we have done um, a kind of carbon fast during Lent that we've put in the newsletter. So I don't know if that's something that's still going out to parishioners, even during lockdown. I know that we've been delivering newsletters, both by hand and by email, and just putting in different ideas about getting people to think about their relationship with nature and with creation, and thinking about small activities that people can do um, for themselves, you know, in, in their own lives, and you know, very slowly reflecting on our effect on the environment and our own lifestyle. So I don't know if that's something that could be started off with people while we're still at this stage, just involving people in the conversation. Yeah, I think that's, those are some great ideas. Lovely idea about the outdoor walks and prayer walks and masses. And um, please let us know if anyone um, takes those on board. Hopefully that's been helpful to Andrea as well. Does anyone else have a question just now? Uh, Catherine, excellent. I shall pass over to you. 
Um, something that strikes me uh, is that um, on a personal level, ir um, irrespective, so much of uh, gardens, people who have gardens, quite a few of them are being, well, for, for the car to be driven into rather than growing as a garden. Maybe this is something that we have to think of in the future, that if we do have a garden, and let's face it, with uh, petrol maybe becoming less easy to get or cars becoming less popular, um, modes of travel, travel, maybe the fact that we, we, we can use our gardens to help the food situation. With I know that quite a few of our neighbours seem to be suddenly be interested in growing vegetables <laughs> since we've all been locked down and had to do something with the garden anyway. And um, and I think I think we have to think about this too on a, a, a personal level. Um, it's it's the, the parish is run by the parish community, and that's good. But as individuals, um, I, I I think we have to think of a much much wider um, scene of um, we have a whole world to set to rights, not just. Uh, the parish. Uh, I, mean, I'm, I was following a programme that was on BBC. I don't know whether you know about it, if you, you watch. The reporter who was going to America and she found an area in Texas where there were 50,000 cattle all in a huge area being fed oil, corn, which was grown for cattle feeding, not for people. And um, and that, that, was, that was all that they were there for. There was no grass anywhere. And 50,000 cattle all in the one area. And that is something that is absolutely colossal. <laughs> Sorry, that's taken it a bit further than the parish. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts. And yes, I think it is really important to think about the, the individuals and what we are doing as well, as well as the parish. Um, and I can see lots of different things going on in the chat from um, Francine and Karen as well, talking about what they've been doing. Um, does anyone want to say a little bit more about, about that? Francine, do you want to say a little bit about um, what you've been doing? I'm trying to unmute you still. Um, okay. Yeah. No. I. I. I was just responding to to the ideas and because you know I sympathised with the the person who's trying to contact make contact with others in the parish. Um, and I mean we've registered our church, but it's not kind of gone an awful lot further than that. And so um, we're also having a change of priest happened. We lost, you know, our, our uh, so that's not a great time. And I was checking on the map, and I see that the, the church that he came from in Stirling, that none of the Catholic churches there are eco congregations. So I've we've no idea whether he's had an eco conversion or not. So I suppose things are going to have to go on hold a bit, but I don't want to delay things too much with this being season of creation. It'd be nice to get something going. And the idea of maybe asking people to share favourite walks um, that could be listed in the parish newsletter, because that, that goes online so people could see that. That's a good idea. And I, I like the sound of the pet blessing, which would be an outdoor thing as well, which somebody suggested. And um, again, it depends we don't know what what sort of views the priest would have on any of that so we'll just have to wait and see what happens sorry not very helpful <laughs> oh that's great thank you very much i think stephen had had maybe been going to say something before i th thought i saw his hand go up are you going to say something stephen yeah i was i was just a brief comment i mean um i think that the challenge we've got with doing anything now is obviously the restrictions that we're we're facing because of the coronavirus but one example I thought was worth mentioning was 
the Faith Action for Nature resource, which we have, which we did in partnership with RSPB Scotland. And that was to try to encourage church volunteers to become RSPB volunteers and get involved with reserves if they had them in their locality. But there's some activities in there that you can do if you have a garden space of your own. Maybe you have children or, or grandchildren who could maybe do things that can encourage his wildlife. So it could be things like bug hotels and, you know, just sort of respecting and enjoying the, the wildlife, as well as the food aspect that obviously Catherine mentioned. And we've looked at like community food, um, churches working together. So we've got events coming up next week that will be going on our webpage. One's about different faith communities, whether it's churches doing a community fridge or growing or... Um, to touch on Honor's earlier point, uh, Gudwara and, and mosques um, doing a lot of food during the lockdown restrictions. Um, but also food waste training that we do with Zero Waste Scotland, where it's about in your own home minimising the waste of food and being clever about how you store food as well. So we've got a lot of good opportunities working with other organisations, but also just doing things yourself in your own home. If you've got a garden space or even if you've got access to a small space that you can safely um, get to if you're, if you're maybe staying in a, in a flat with a back court and things like that as well. So I'll pop the link to the Faith Action for Nature in the, the web page, uh, the chat box here. Great, thank you. <laughs> Um, I think that Jonathan has a question. I'll go over to Jonathan. Yeah, first of all, I just really I wanted to say that I really like the idea which um, Karen and uh, Miriam shared about the pet blessing. It seems really fitting for the season of creation, the, the Feast of St. Francis, Canticle of the Creatures and all that. Um, but no, uh, someone did email me before this event because um, they couldn't make it and they wanted to ask a question um, for Karen and uh, Marion about young people. Um, let me just have a wee look to see what it was. Yeah, so they were saying over the past 18 months, there has been a massive surge in young people taking part in activism for the climate. Have you been able to get young people involved in your parish activities locally? Uh, I know, Karen, you obviously spoke about links with the local school, so I wonder if, if maybe you could tell us a wee bit more about that. Yes, absolutely. Um, the links with the local school, well, Everything is different now because of COVID, but it is an ongoing thing. Our, the garden is developed so that everyone can use it. So hopefully the, the children can go across and identify things um, and keep that going. But we also have uh, children like teenage, teenage years um, that joined in with some of the protests. We've also had a lot of uh, Caritas students come and help us with some of our coffee mornings. We also had an excellent event um, that was celebrating the diversity and the diverse culture within our parish where all the um, community brought different dishes of food from different communities and with a lot of students come and help out and help serve teas and coffees and, and, and they're, they're always, a lot of them are really um, energised and helping the old, a lot of intergenerational stuff, you know, they'll come when the um, senior citizens are having a, an event, they'll come and help as well. So it's just, it's just about um, making, I'm always really um, conscious that the younger people don't feel they all have to be Greta and Thunberg, you know, they, they all have a voice and to be non-judgmental because I think some of them get put off by being involved because they think they have to be this amazing person that ties themselves to a tree. Well, it's not about that, you know, everybody's learning um, about how to help and it's just keeping them informed and where they can help and asking them, you know, asking them, usually they will say yes to a lot of things. So again, it's getting them involved if you're doing like a prayer walk or you're doing a, some sort of video, um, a lot of, I hate to be ageist here, but a lot of the younger generation are very good te technically as well, so they can help with things like that. So it's just finding a place that they can actually fit in and help without being patronising and keeping them involved. Thanks, Karen. Um, Marion, do you want to also say anything about young people in the parish? Yeah, we've just started. We don't have very many um teenagers in our parish we have younger children that we're hoping will attract in terms of the garden and so on but we've just started working with a local uh, environmental group and um father ronald and uh, the the representative from that are thinking about being able to go into the schools with the environmental message. So that's something that we're kind of hoping to build on. I think that that would 
be a really good way to to engage so it's it's on the agenda uh, but it obviously depends on being able to go into schools or being able to um, zoom into schools uh, with with that kind of information and chat yeah i i know it is difficult there's many barriers just now to participating but um there's lots of good ideas there um, i shall just go over to lucy now who has a question I was just thinking um, it's difficult to plan and we obviously hope that COP would be this year and it's going to be next year but for Stephen what maybe parishes can start doing to think about COP now um, and and then closer to the time what 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 plans there are already for what parishes can do to get involved? Yeah that's a great question I mean we've got, we've got a kind of small one page two-sided handout which is basically saying on one side what is COP <laughs> and what, why is it coming here and the second side is just some ideas for people um, to do in their own parish sometimes it can be about having a discussion about what you want to do locally sometimes it can be about signing up to campaigns that might be nas national campaigns in Scotland or across the UK calling on governments to take a lead in to, to act decisively in, in different ways and support the big changes we need to make. Some things can be just about practice. And of course, you know, you could meet and pray, you could pray on Zoom or another, you know, forum online um, about the environment. And we've got um, resources that are um, not just for season of creation, but monthly resources we've now developed to focus on different themes. So this month it's around food and the harvest time. Um, last month it was around reusing things it would normally throw out. And it's just, it's almost like, it's kind of, it feels a bit like having a conversation around a, a cup of coffee after mass. You know, going into small groups, we normally do it in that way through Zoom and we can support other people doing that in their own parish, where you can't physically do that now, but you can virtually have that conversation that's saying, well, this month, you know, what kind of food do we buy? Where does it come from? What's the cost of that? What's the environmental cost of it? And it's, it really opens up discussion people can have now in a very slow progress. Um, so I'll, I'll see if I can dig out the link to this <laughs> this, this uh, two-page effort that we've got and pop it in the chat as well. But that's a really good way of just people understanding why it's coming here, what it's about. But the other side of it, talking about different ideas for that sort of spiritual, practical, global focus, whatever makes sense to people at this moment in time. Thank you. I can see Mike has got um, a hand. Yeah, uh, I, I can feel a, a, a certain amount of frustration uh, that things aren't going as fast as people would uh, like. And, uh, all to do with the pandemic and all that. And I might be wrong, with all due respect, look, looking at the screen, uh, most people, uh, there's no young, their fingers are together, uh, communicating with each other, and they're all the time on all this social media and that. It would seem to me we should be looking for some really creative, probably much younger people who would be committed uh, to the environment uh, and to the gospel. And, you know, we, we like to go to the church hall and have a cup of tea, but the kids, the one thing they're really good at, uh, which we don't understand, well, I don't understand very much about, is networking. They're, they're great at networking and you know we might be talking about Scotland and looking after the environment and the next thing you'll know that the kids are talking to people in America and Russia and, and all over the place and they dominate this area but we, we don't seem to 
Um, I don't know, we, we don't seem to be able to dominate it very well. But just, just an idea to throw out. Thanks, Father Frain. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good point. If anyone's got any more tips, we talked a bit of. Stephen wants to come and use it. I know that there's, there's obviously work on a new resource for work with young people in schools, which is really important. Every parish has got young people in their community doing something. So it could be the schools in Eco School, which is a Keep Scotland Beautiful program, which is kind of like what we do, but doesn't have any spiritual angle on it. So it's all the practical stuff and a little bit of the global focus. So you could be asking them in a parish context, what are you doing? Do you need support from us? But also, do you want to talk to us online? We thought for years it was about how do we reach out to young people, but it's actually back to front. It should be more about us saying, well, what are you doing? What would you like, what would you like us to do? Uh, and sometimes that can be the school climate strikers if they're, if they're in your own area. Some of us are a wee bit uncomfortable with that because it's young people taking time out of school, but they're young people who are passionate about it. And if you at least give them a forum to talk about what they're doing, um, it's not condescending. It's about giving them their place and a bit of respect for, for having a position. And obviously very, very young children um, are not involved in that. But you think about children at children's liturgy. Um, which is a challenge just now in terms of the way we're doing mass, but there's opportunities there where young people can feel a lot of anxiety around the climate emergency, and you want them to feel that there's a hope through the pastoral work that not just the parish priest, but the parish community can do with young people, and that sometimes can come through in the children's liturgy maybe a bit more easily than it can even in our Thanks very much, Stephen. Anyone have any uh, final questions for our speakers? Um, An earlier speaker mentioned the absence of young people on this forum. I'm struck by the absence of men. Do the speakers find that it's mostly women who are interested? in the environment? A hundred percent, Honour. You know this is true. <laughs> but it's, it's, the same, it's the same in all churches, all denominations. Um, women have a lot of lead roles in, in this work, particularly, is, is my diplomatic answer. <laughs> True. I had no but yes. Um, I think at some of your eco congregation Zoom meetings, there have been men. We, <laughs> I've been in chat rooms with men on your eco congregation Zooms. So they 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 do have a they they are there. They're out there. Don't be unkind to your <laughs> to your gender. And by the way, I think anybody who um, anybody who wants to join an eco very very good. I've been to what seems like hundreds of them, and they are excellent. So do sign up for the the eco congregation. Thank you. Um, good to know there are some males joining some of the other groups. <laughs> Maybe just not this one. <laughs> um, does anyone have a, a last um, question for any first speakers before we finish up? I'll just scan through the photos. Nope. Any of the, would any of the speakers like to say any last words? <laughs> Great. Thank well, you. Thank you. Well, I just um, before we finish up, I'd just like to let you know about our um, next event in the series, which is on Wednesday, the sixteenth of September.
We'll be joined by representatives from a Catholic development organisation in Zambia um, to talk about the meaning of climate justice. Um, Caritas Kabwe are one of SCIAF's partners in Zambia. And you can hear directly from them about how some of the world's poorest people are already being affected by the climate emergency, even though they have done little or nothing to cause the problem. Um, and we'll have hopefully Father Jim Lawler as well, talking about the Scottish Catholic perspective as well on that. So, and after that as well, there'll be another event which Liz and Sister Mary Kilpatrick are running the week later. So I'd just like to thank all the speakers again for your time tonight and joining us, for all your ideas, for answering all the questions and inspiring us. Um, thank you to all the questions and for sharing all the links and um, ideas in the chat box as well. It's been fantastic. We will follow up with the Care for the Common Home resource in the email tomorrow and if you have anything else just reply to the email and we can get in touch about supporting you with becoming an eco parish as well as Stephen can as well so thank you so much and lovely to see you all and have a very nice rest of your evening thank you bye-bye thank you thanks and bye everyone good night everyone